Hello. You're a detective. What can I do for you? Lost your wife, have you? You don't look like a detective. That's because I'm in disguise. Disguise? Well, if I look like a detective, people wouldn't tell me anything, would they? Secrets and that. Oh. Here, want a bit of chocolate? So. There's a body in the river. What? I thought it was a log at first, but it's not. It's a body. What's your name? Pete. Only my mates call me Gonzo on account of my nose. I think you've been watching that Hill Street Blues, Gonzo. They have bodies in rivers. No, honest. It's a bearded geezer in a Mac. Show me. You know something, Lyman? If they'd started Danny White against the Redskins, it would have been a totally different ball game. Danny White would have been sacked more times than Hogan. Hey, what are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm opening a window. Hey, come on, it's British weather out there. Yeah, well, I can't breathe in here. Look, if you want to commit suicide, that's terrific, but you're not going to take me with you. I'm freezing my butt off. Tough. Yeah? Hang on, hang on. Yeah, go ahead. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah? We got a problem. Double or nothing on the next one. a client, Miss Standfast. I'd been acting for him and some of his, how shall I put it, fellow unfortunates for over three years. But if they're investors, their means can't be that limited. They'd lost their life savings. I felt so sorry for them. Why? Our bud had flown back to America, leaving a bankrupt company and a trail of misery behind him. But that's all academic now. He's back. What's his name? Sanders. Jerry Sanders. He's leading a consortium of American businessmen. They've applied for a government grant to build an office block in the Isle of Dogs. Well, at least you'll be able to take him to court. Well, I was about to start the wheels in motion, but it seems that poor Harry Davenport couldn't wait. He'd often said that if Saunders ever came back, he'd wring his neck. I'm very much afraid that two days ago, that's exactly what he tried to do. Which is how he came to end up in the river. Hmm. And Harry Davenport was not a potential suicide, Miss Stamfast. But you only handle society divorces. No, it's a slow week. They seem to be sleeping in their own beds for a change. So you're scratching for work? No, I ain't got a client. No use asking who, I suppose. I suppose right. Well, there's nothing dodgy about Davenport's death. It was obviously suicide. Why obviously? Because he drowned. He probably jumped off a bridge somewhere upstream. OK, so maybe he didn't jump. Maybe he swam out there and got cramp or something. Coffee? Black. Did you know he had a heart condition? No, but it doesn't change anything. He didn't die of heart failure. He had no reason to kill himself. If you'd talked to his widow, she'd have told you that. Do I detect a hint of criticism? Why didn't you talk to her, Jim? There's no point. I'm satisfied. Chalmers is satisfied. As far as we're concerned, it's a wrap. I'd like to see the body. Why? I'd like our clients to be satisfied. I'm sorry, Maggie. Can't do it. You're not a relation, and you're not on the strength anymore. Jim, I don't want to have to get heavy. We can either do this under the old pals act, or uh, else I can go over your head. Now oh, then, where did you find him, Sonny? About there, wasn't it, Gonzo? Uh, yeah. A couple of days ago, that will be the 19th. What time? Uh, about half nine in the morning. Little end of the ebb. You know how long you've been in the water? Eight hours, the copper said. Eight hours. Six hours of ebb, average one and a half knots. One and a half hours flood at one knot. 
the tide sets in around that point, that could put him straight on those flats where you found him. He could slosh around there for days. Right, working backwards. That would make his point of entry round about there. How's your nose feel, Gonzo? Why? Should be twitching. What's that? What? The abrasion on the back of his head. Flotsam, according to Chalmers. Flotsam? Must have been travelling 100 miles an hour. Listen, Maggie, if it's an insurance claim, you can stop worrying. It'll go down on the report as accidental death, although I still think he OD'd. No, you don't. What? You're too good a copper to think that. How could you assume he'd OD'd with a bloody great head woman staring you in the face? What the hell is going on? Stay out of it, Maggie. Stick to your society divorces. Save yourself a lot of grief. No. So, we went down the marina, chatted up the boss man bloke, and guess what happened? There's a yacht moored there chartered by Jerry Sanders. My God, Gonzo, she's psychic. What's that? It's like a witch. She knows what she couldn't possibly know. Are you really a witch? No, Gonzo. You come sailing in here like a couple of cats who swallowed a bucket full of cream. When you told me you'd been to a marina, I put two and two together. So where do we go from here? Well, you stay in mind the shop. Gonzo goes home to his mother. I get myself invited out to dinner. Goodbye. Yeah, Desmond Proudfoot. Oh, not that ponce. Oh, what do you want to go to dinner with him for? Because he's a mine of information. And because I'm hungry. Chalmers. Oh, yes. Is that you, Doctor? Well, of course it's me. What do you want? Uh, Maggie, M Maggie Forbes, the, the Creswell case. Do you remember? Maggie. Ah, yes. <laughs> Inspector Forbes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's just plain Maggie these days. Can I come in? Well, I wouldn't advise it. My grandson's having a birthday <laughs> party. It's absolute hell in uh, I won't give you very long. It's just a couple of questions. Well, if it really is just a couple of questions, come on. Thank you. Well, Harry Davenport, uh, the old man they pulled out of the river. You did the PM on him yesterday. Yes, what about it? What was the cause of death? Well, as you might expect, drowning. So it was either accident or suicide? No, most certainly not. Didn't you read my report? Uh, Jim Phelps wouldn't show it to me. Why not? I'm no longer on the force. Then why the interest? I'm a private investigator now. I've got a client who's interested. But you should know I can't reveal my findings to anybody but the investigating officer. If your client wants a special report, well, you will have to find another pathologist. Doctor... Was the abrasion on the back of his head really caused by Flotsam? Who oh, on earth told you that? Jim Phelps. How very odd. Why would he invent something so ludicrous? So it's not true. Oh, of course not. Flotsam, indeed. <laughs> if that's the tale he's telling, he'll make me look an incompetent fool. Do you want to put the record straight? Yes, perhaps I'd better. The abrasion was caused by a blow on the head before the deceased entered the water. A blow? From what, do you know? A weapon. In a rather distinctive shape. Now, something like this. Jerry Sanders is just your type, crew, darling. Like fast cars, fast horses, and fast women. I don't like fast women. Neither do I. Slow women are bad enough. Let's face it, Desmond, the only women you're interested in are the ones caught in flagrante with cabinet ministers, preferably with big boobs. Now, don't be coarse, Prudence. The size of her boobs is immaterial. What my readers want to know is, 
how many hyphens she has, and how many racing drivers she's poured champagne over. You realize you finished that sentence with a preposition. Yeah, it's dreadful, isn't it? Fleet Street's gradually dragging me down. Next thing you know, I'll be typing impute, when I mean impugn. Isn't it time you resigned and wrote the great novel? Mm, definitely not. I've grown too fond of La Dolce Vita to give it all up now. I'll tell you what. You write it. I'll put my name to it. And we'll go 50-50. How's that? Too generous. I really would like to hear more about Sanders. Tell me, Prue, dear. Why is a nice girl like you interested in a chap like Sanders? Because he's an embezzler. Because he may also be a murderer. Agree. Sounds like what they call a scoop. I'll give you a pass. Fella. Lucky fella. The guy you're waiting for. I'm not waiting for anyone. I didn't think ladies did that over here. Did what? Drink on their own. Maybe I'm not a lady. Oh, you sure are. I know class when I see it. Are you trying to pick me up? Any objection? Just don't push too hard, okay? Old classic, Maggie. You offer fantastically high rates of interest. Pay off the original investors with money from the new ones. Sooner or later, you're about to collapse, but by then you've made a killing and you get the hell out. So, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Nothing? When we heard Sanders was coming back, we sent the papers to the DPP. He told us to drop it. You had insufficient evidence? Do me a favor. We had him by the short and curlies. Why? Political decision, if you ask me. The almighty dollar rules. So, three years of investigation goes down the tube. Let me get this straight. You reckon that pressure was put on the DPP because Sanders was bringing in a lot of hard currency? Makes sense, doesn't it? From the government's point of view. And they're just going to be swept under the car. They stand about as much chance of getting a result as Tranmere Rovers at Anfield. Makes you sick, doesn't it? Makes me bloody angry. Just sound as far. We play noughts and crosses on it. Can you get me a coffee? I don't know about that. I'm only five years from a pension. It's the only way where hard work's gonna pay off. Okay, so long as you keep me out of it. Eat your sausage. Just one question, Jay. I think we'd better get this out of the way, up front, as you colonials have it. Are you married? No. Ever been? Sure, three times. Sometimes it feels like I'm supporting half the population of Connecticut. <laughs> Is that where you're from, Connecticut? Are you kidding? I come from a cold water tenement in the Bronx. But I had one thing going for me. Brains. It shows, huh? Why did you think I allowed you to pick me up? Uh, I wondered. I mean, uh, it's not as if I'm God's gift to women, right? Especially a classy dame like you. Man's looks aren't important. It's what's upstairs that interests me. Do you mean that uh, if he's got it upstairs, he's got it downstairs? I wouldn't have put it quite as crudely, but... Um... Sorry, I... Uh... I was never too hot in the good taste department. That is one thing that you do not learn in the Bronx. I think you've got extremely good taste. You do? You pick me up, don't you? Uh, take a pew, Nigel. 
Thank you, sir. Now, what was it I wanted to talk to you about? Oh, yes, those three viragos of yours, the eyes people. Oh, they're not mine, sir. All I do is process their expenses. Which, incidentally, are far too high. I mean, is it really necessary for them to order those reams of embossed notepaper? Writing paper. Sorry? Nothing. You were saying. I was saying that no woman is an island, Nigel. That poet chap was absolutely right. What they need is a firm hand on their tillers. My brief's liaison, sir. I wasn't told anything about um, strong hands on tillers. Well, I suggest the time has come when you should take a more active role. Can't always let the eyes have it, eh? Joke, Nigel. The double meaning hadn't escaped me, sir. Thing is, one of them has started fishing in a no-go area. So just gently push her back to where she belongs, would you? Which one? Forbes. That woman can't seem to stop making a damn nuisance of herself. But I'm sure she didn't realize. Well, she must be made to realize. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. Not an ocean going liner. Not bad, eh? For a kid from the Bronx. Status symbol. Yeah, well, I've got a wine and buy a lot of break sack, so we thought we'd do it in style. Come on, with my partners. Okay, Skipper, cut the string or whatever the hell you gotta do. Very good, sir. Cast off, Forrest. Hey, everybody. <laughs> this is Georgie. Tony, Sam, and Gino. Glad to know you, Georgie. Welcome aboard. And this is Abby, my secretary. Hi. Let me get you a drink. Gin? Scotch? <laughs> I think I'd better go easy on the hard stuff. I only have to look at the sea and I throw up. <laughs> We're not going as far as the sea. Just a gentle trip down river. There is no such thing as a gentle trip on water. Not for me. So why'd you come? Because Jerry asked me. Yeah, he's a great guy, isn't he? Well, how y'all doing? Right on, big boy. Yes, Nigel. No, Nigel. What do you mean, certain parties? Oh, stop being so white hoolish, for God's sake. All right, all right. Message received and understood. And probably ignored. This is bigger than we thought. Why? Nigel, warning us off. What was it got to do with him? Good question. Who's Nigel? Backstabber. Gin? <sighs> Having a good time, Georgie? Yes. It looks good to kill Light have been dead as soon as I came aboard. How come? Abby, she seems to think she has a prior claim. Don't worry about her. She's yesterday's news. She know that? She knows it was no big deal. No strings, no guarantees. I have to get some mail. Would you excuse me, please? You want me to come? No, no, you stand with you.
your sea legs yet? <laughs> Me, I'm lucky. Never had that kind of trouble. Every one of my ancestors was a fish. <laughs> I'm afraid I come from a long line of land lovers. Nothing to be ashamed of. To each his own, right? But you're a wizard hunting and shooting. My father is. Personally, I find the persecution of our fellow creatures somewhat degrading. You do? Just shows how wrong you can be. I thought all you British upper crust types spent all your time chasing after foxes and birds. Nowadays, we spend all our time saving our stately homes from the tax man. What England are you from? Actually, I was born in India, but my parents live in Hampshire now. Do you, uh, commute? No. I have a flat in town. Where? What is this, the Inquisition? Sorry, no offense. I... It's just that back home we're more curious about strangers than you are. That's why we ask all these damn fool questions. What is this love affair you got with windows? Yeah, what love affair is that? Well, every time you see one, you gotta open it. Mm. Oh, what are you trying to do, give me pneumonia? Look, I'll stop opening windows when you stop trying to give me lung cancer. You know, that's the second pack you've been through already today? Pack and a half, Max. Oh, no, come on, you had ten before Jeez. we even left this morning. You sound like my old lady. Look, will you read that? Huh? Look at it. What? There, there. What's it say? Richly rewarding, uncommonly smooth. Will what? you skip the commercial? There, there, there. Low tar. Right? Low tar. It's not the tar that bothers me, it's the smoke. I can't stand smoke. See you, Jim. Sorry, I went a bit queasy on you, Jerry. Okay, now? So when are we going to see you again? I don't know. I'll call you. Well, can I call you? Not yet. I don't like to be crowded. Crowded? Come on. I really did enjoy my stuff. Oh, may I have some of this to take home? Sure. Be my guest. Dad, no problem. Waste not, want not, as my father used to say. Lovely. Boy, Sanders can really pick him. Yeah, she's a looker, all right. What else is she? Well, there you go. Whoops. You? Chocolates? Bye, Georgie. Bye, Jerry. Investigator. So what do we got here? Philip and Marlon? Hmm. That's all we need. Listen, if she's a Seamus, we're gonna have to lose her. Now this is a real detective, Gonzo. She doesn't go around asking questions in the rain. Oh no, that's for us minions. She gets to lay on yachts. Being offered dry martinis by nice looking blokes, then she gets them all in the cabin and says, Someone on this boat is a murderer. <laughs> You're right. Someone on that boat is a murderer. Blimey. 
What is it? Murder weapon? I'll take it to Charles. Oh, three things, Prue. Message on the machine. Your friend, Desmond. Copy of Sanders' fraud squad file on your desk. My friend, Mike. Oh, I got a call telling us to lay off the case. Fred's friend, Nigel. Nigel? Don't look at us, miss. We don't know anyone called Nigel, do we? No. Hello, Prue, darling. Desmond here. Your ever-loving swain. Our city editor has been making some inquiries about your friend's friends. He confirms they're definitely persona non grata in American legal circles. One little exception. Sounders' secretary, Miss Abigail Walker, used to have a highly classified job in the Puzzle Palace. Yes, the National Security Agency. Pick the bones out of that one, Prue, darling. Bye for now. Well, it's been a long day. Gonzo and me are clocking off for the night. OK? OK. Goodbye, Gonzo. Thanks for your help. Did you really find the murderer? No. She didn't. We did. We found the yacht, didn't we? Yeah. We're a pretty good team, right? Right. I have to talk to you. I'm pushed, Abby. Can't it wait till morning? No. Your friend with a cut glass accent? She's a detective. You are kidding. Her name's Stanfast. She runs an agency near where they found Davenport. And she's traced him to the boat. How? God knows. But she's obviously pretty smart. Because the boat hook's missing. Jesus. You're a liability, Jerry. You've been a walking disaster area since day one. God knows why we didn't run a check on you. What do you want me to do? Nothing. Luckily, she has government connections, so we can use a bit of leverage. Suppose it doesn't work. You better pray it does. the murder weapon proof no questions traces of blood and a couple of good prints okay Marie. look ask him to keep it under wraps for 24 hours will you right. that's right i have to go Bye. hi joe evening prudence it's better g and t can you I take it this is an official visit. <laughs> what makes you think that? I'm getting bad vibes. I can't imagine why. It's just that you've inadvertently strayed into another department's territory and there's a conflict of interests. I see. So if you'd be good enough to give them a clear field from now on. Lay off, you mean? Well, yes. You know what a bore interdepartmental rivalry can be. I also know what happens when one leaves things to Whitehall. Frantic inactivity followed by a deafening silence. Sorry, Prudence. It's an order. I suppose you realize we have evidence. Irrefutable evidence that Sanders is an embezzler. And the circumstantial evidence that he's also a murderer. It doesn't matter what he is. He's out of bounds. Why? I can't answer that. And I can't drop the investigation. Oh, dear. I was afraid you'd be difficult. Difficult? 
You really expect me to let a man like Sanders off the hook just because some faceless pinstripe in the corridors of power puts a block on the case? No, Nigel, you will have to do better than that. Established a meaningful relationship. I know who you are. You're a goddamn snooper. You should have kept out of it. You don't know what you're into. Oh, I know what I'm into, all right. Embezzlement. A murder. From the top. You must know that or you wouldn't be here. The cops don't want to know, right? They will, after I give the story to the press. You're bluffing. No, Jerry. I have a copy of the Fraud Squad's file on you. And the pathologist's report, which confirms Davenport was killed on your boat. Wasn't me. Who, then? Gino. Gino. I invited Davenport for dinner on the yacht because I thought I could buy him off. But I was wrong. He lost his temper and started shouting and swearing. Gino told him to shut up, but he just went on and on, threatening to tell the world what a son of a bitch I was. So Gino hit him on the head with a boat hook? I may be a no good son of a bitch, Miss, whatever your name is. But I'm no killer. There may be a way you can get out from under. What's that? By turning Queen's evidence. If you give me a signed statement implicating Gino, and if you agree to reimburse my clients in full, maybe we can make a deal. I already got a deal. Not with me. And I'm the one with the proof. Suppose I tell you what you can do with it. I'll blow you right out of the water. Okay. Give me 24 hours to find the money, and you can have your statement. Well, that's it. We've got to take out Sanders. Mm hmm So, what about Goldilocks? Well, when we take care of Sanders, that'll take care of her. Hey, they said low profile. The D notice covers the entire consortium. Yes. I don't believe this. Who side are you on, for God's sake? The country's. And the country's quite prepared to let a murderer get away scot free. I don't like it any more than you do. But I have to obey orders. Well, I don't. Stop the car. But we're miles away from anywhere. Let me out. Pull in, Horace. Bury it, Prudence. Please. As a favor to me. I only do favors for friends, Nigel. Quick, shut the door. What the hell's going on? I'm in trouble, Abby. Big trouble. You gotta get me out of here. Out of where? Out of this goddamn country. 
I gotta lie low till you can get me on a plane. But you can't leave now. If I stick around, my life won't be worth a plugged nickel. Why? Well, that detective came to see me. She wants a sworn statement. It was Gino knocked off that Davenport guy. And she's got some kind of a file on me. If I don't do what she wants, she'll give it to the papers. A lot of people aren't going to be too happy about that. I know. But for old time's sake, you got to help me. Not for old time's sake, Jerry. Because we need to get you out of our hair. I'd like to make a reservation for a Mr. Sanders on the next available flight to New York. Where the hell are they? Why can't they get their act together? Relax, Jerry. Fix yourself another drink. Maybe I should take a cab. They said they'd send for a car. You better wait for it. Yeah. That's gotta be it. Hi, Jerry. You called Gino? No, they called Gino. Oh, double crossing bitch! <laughs>
is it? Just don't make any sudden movements. I haven't had much sleep and I'm feeling distinctly edgy. You won't need that. Looks like you had quite a night. It was just a short visit. I couldn't persuade them to stay. Who were they? Well, they didn't leave their names, but as they took your file, I imagine they were your friends from the CIA. You uh, worked it out then? Some of it. Why would you choose a secretary who used to work for the National Security Agency? I didn't choose her. She, she was assigned to me. I gather she was more than the secretary. I... I thought that she cared for me. She turned out to be nothing but a spy. Hell hath no fury like a con man conned. She called Gina. Can you believe that? The dirtiest trick of all. They all want me at the bottom of the river. Why wouldn't I want you at the bottom of a river? Because with me dead, your clients would never get their money. And you'd never be able to pin Davenport's murder on Gino. They've tracked you down, Jerry. Well, tch, call the police. No, they might hand you over to those sharks out there. I do hope you're enjoying yourself, Nigel. What? It's tapped. Fire service, please. called Desmond Proudfoot, whose number's 01... <laughs> Tell him I'm on my way to Fleet Street. I've got a great story for him. It's them. What the hell is going on? I thought you were going to help me. <laughs> I should have known. You bastard. Why can't you do as you are told, Prudence? Certain parties are highly displeased. 
Certain parties can take a running jump. I warned you. You were trespassing. You won't get away with this. I'll get the whole thing to the press. No, you won't. Why not? Because you signed the official secrets act. God, you are a bastard. You've made your view of my plan perfectly clear. But you realize you've sat back Anglo-American relations at least 10 years. You've even put my job in jeopardy. Good. I hope you spend the rest of your life on the dole. However, despite all the trouble you've caused, I think I can use my influence on your behalf. To do what? Buy us an extra box of paper clips. I believe I can persuade the British and American governments to reimburse all Sanders investors in full. I see. 30 pieces of silver. I'd have thought you'd be pleased. What happens to Sanders? Hand him over to our transatlantic cousin. Do you care what happens to him? Do you? Thank you, Mr. McNeil. Yes, I'll certainly convey your congratulations to Miss Stanfast. Goodbye. That's a very satisfied client. Makes a change. He says he's sure he'll be calling on our services again before long. Makes me feel like a high-class tart. Why high-class? Watch it, PC plod. <laughs> or you'll be the next thing that falls off of the back of my brother's lorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Gonzo. What are you up to? I'm just shaving another body. Where? In the river. Are you sure? Well... Could be a log, I suppose. Ooh. For heaven's sake, Gonzo, leave us alone. Go and fish the other bank. Right. 